Hey, what's going on guys? Kumik again here. In this video, I would like to demonstrate how critical move ordering is in the chess engine that relies on alpha beta search. So, at the moment, I have my move ordering being completely disabled. Even though uh, the move ordering is very, very basic now, uh, it only sorts captures in the MVV LVA order, which means uh, most valuable victim and less valuable attacker. I will cover this a little bit later on. And also uh, killer moves and history moves. What are these two types of moves? Uh, I will explain that just right in a moment as well. So, but you know, like uh, the difference in the number of nodes being traversed is such a dramatic so that I just I just want to demonstrate you this to, to give you an idea how actually important move ordering is. And then when you'll see uh, an example, I will quickly walk through the implementation, just trying to describe how it works in particular. So. Uh, uh, assume the fact that my engine has an API, a public API already, we can, we can uh, do some useful things like uh, setting the FEN. Uh, I'm using console here. We're going to do this via Node.js in the browser as well. By the way, it's already capable of playing as a UCI engine within the Arena GUI. I will probably demonstrate that at the very end as well. And also, let's go for a very simple, a very basic like search depth one. and you might wonder this should have, should have happened instantly, but uh, in alphabet search, assuming that the quest and search is working, uh, so what is the quest and search? Uh, it's serving the purpose of getting rid of the horizon effect. So let's say the Nigamax search ends up when, say, queen captures knight, and you might wonder that uh, white is gonna piece up, but it might happen that the next move the queen gets recaptured and white find themselves in the position where they actually lost the queen for a knight, which is really bad. And that was evaluated, uh, evaluated completely wrong before. So uh, quest and search is the routine that generates only capture moves and uh, plays captures uh, recursively until the so-called quiet uh, position is reached. By saying quiet position, I mean the position where there, there are no more captures available in the position. So only quiet moves. So I hope that's clear. And uh, this capture generation, it doesn't have a depth limit. Well, it actually does, but um, on the real deal, it never re reaches that. So it, if it exceeds the max ply, uh, the, the maximal search ply, which is 64 in my case, then it would just stop. But again, like it would take ages to to get there. So anyway, I just uh, it, it's it's kind of like if, if we were talking about the depth of 64, which is which takes really long time. Okay, so. Uh, I just started the engine. Uh, I just uh, started the search, and it's kind of working now. And it's searching uh, all these captures, and it takes incredibly long. So if you want to make a chess engine that actually <laughs> capable of doing something like playing chess, that's not an option, definitely, because it's still searching and searching and searching and searching and searching. So it's kind of that I'm talking, and it's and it, and it keeps searching. So it doesn't. Uh, kind of give the output and now finally it does so at the depth one oh my god we have we have 39 million nodes can you believe this 39 million nodes or no no hold on a sec 3 million sorry 3 million nodes yeah 39 is a little bit too much so we have 3 million nodes this is so so much so so many nodes and only the depth of one so this is total disaster we, we, we can't allow this but now the magic behind move ordering. So I will now only enable uh, capture sorting in the MVVLV order. Uh, I will first demonstrate this and then we'll describe how, how it works. Well, th then I will demonstrate this part as well. So I just want to see my source code here and let's update and let's initialize the position and go search one. And now it comes instantly with, with only 1,000 nodes. Can you believe it? Yeah, this is so cool. So there was 3 million nodes and now it's only 1,000 nodes. So the difference is so critical. So now we can, let's say, search for a depth of five and it's okay, it works. So we will only have three, four, nine, three, seven, eight nodes. But this number can be reduced as well. So all the matter of uh, making your chess engine faster is actually the matter of uh, uh, narrowing the, sco the, the scope of uh, of the search to making the tree search shape kind of more like uh, going deeper and not going wide, widespread in order to th th that forces like searching for useless moves basically so you just remember you, you just remember this sort of a number so three four nine three seven eight and i will now enable q 
killer move sorting, uh, first killer move sorting, second killer move sorting, and uh, uh, history move sorting as well. And now this number would, won't be uh, that dramatically decreased, but still would be a little bit less. So I just want to initialize the position again. And let's go search depth 5. And now it's 3, 4, 1. So, oh my god, what was it before? I forgot already. So, okay, this was 3, 4, 1. And the year it was... Okay, 3, 4, 1. And before this it was... I just forgot that, sorry guys. 3, 4, 1, 3, 4, 1, 3, 4, 6. Yeah, so the, it was 3, 4, 6. But now it's kind of like 3, 4, 1, which is quite pretty, not that bad at all. Okay, so this is how critical move ordering is basically, yeah, 3, 4, 1. And I don't even yet uh, sort the best move from the previous iteration, which is also uh, a thing to consider to be, to be done in future. So anyway, uh, what else? What else? Yeah, so now probably let's quickly walk through the implementation. It's very simple. But you see the power behind this very basic move ring actually brings your chess engine to life and it so you can play chess versus other engines, which is which is a really good idea, uh, which is a really good thing. So uh, let's start with uh, so, so first the general idea. So alphabet search uh, is different from the brute force search by the fact of having so-called beta cutoffs. So if I just go to, let's say, to my Nigamax search, uh, here it is. So if score is greater or equals than beta. So uh, the nodes that that ca causing this uh, so-called beta cutouts, they called uh, they they are they are known as the fail high nodes. It's just a term to to call those nodes. Uh, for instance, nodes that uh, not. Uh, not making alpha being increased are called fail no fail low nodes and they, they occur in right over in here when alpha returns with no improvement and when the alpha is getting improved here so when score is greater than alpha alpha is getting improved this is this is known as the principal variation mode so this understanding this three uh, essential places within the alphabet search is a very important thing if you want to understand how the optimization works so our goal uh, in terms of optim optimizing the alphabet search we need to make this beta cutoff to occur as early as possible as soon as possible so the earlier this beta, beta cutoff occurs the last number of nodes should be traversed to get exactly the same principal variation line here. So that's that's kind of the goal. And in order to do this, we are making what is known as a move sorting. So we first trying to uh, to calculate uh, so-called most promising moves, and then those moves that most likely won't be. Uh, that good. So by saying most promising, I mean those moves that are, are are likely about to to produce this sort of a beta cutoff. So it means that we've found a move good enough, so we don't really need to search those moves that, uh, g given the score worse this than than this current one. So we can just simply skip them because anyway there won't be anything better compared to what we have here. So uh, with this idea in mind. Uh, two very basic techniques uh, arising regarding the move ordering. So the first one is uh, sorting captures. Well, you, you, you've seen that sorting captures is absolutely essential and, and the most critical part, uh, while uh, sorting uh, quiet moves like this killer heuristic and history heuristic here, I'll cover them a little bit later on. It also impacts, does, does an impact on the overall number of uh, traverse nodes, overall number of nodes to have been traversed, but still it's not that critical uh, 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 like the captures are. are. So uh, the MVV LVA uh, is a single, single is, is a simple ta is the simple table, and we're making a, a simple lookup to this table. And now, what this val what are all these values are? So it means that the move where let's say pawn would capture a queen would score the most. So it would be like here. Well, actually, here we have the pawn captures. Uh, no, here, uh, pawn captures queen, uh, king. Here, pawn captures queen, pawn captures rook, pawn captures uh, bishop, knight, and pawn captures pawn. 
and on the other hand if we have say when the queen uh, will be capturing uh, let's say the queen captures the pawn it would score uh, no probably a king captures the score uh, well anyway uh, I'm, I'm not really that mm, that great to, uh, to, to, to say which, uh, which number in particular uh, is responsible for, what, for which part. I, every time I'm uh, debugging this, every time I'm trying to realize how it works from scratch. Just, just, to give you, just to give you an easy idea, so if we have the situation where whatever, either white pawn takes queen, uh, I, I, I understand that there can be the situation where white pawn takes uh, when white pawn takes white queen, but this table actually assumes cases like this j just to shape the array. Uh, so, well, we pro probably we could have get rid of this section and this one or this and this respectively. Not sure which one. Uh, so uh, to handle only cases like this and respectively only cases like this one, black piece captures white piece, but it's not the point. The idea is that uh, the situation uh, where, pawn capture, where pawn captures queen, this would be sc scored most, and the situation, uh, let's say scored most, and the situation where queen actually takes pawn uh, would be scored least. So that's a very simple idea. And the other values are just in between values. So what happens in, let's say, knight captures rook or on the country and so on. So uh, the idea is to give uh, every single move that has been generated, in, uh, we need to give it a score that is used in order to uh, order, the, order the move within the move list. So those moves where we have the least valuable attackers like pawn that capturing uh, most valuable victims like queen so these moves are about to be sorted first and other moves are about to be sorted kind of downwards and again like the order the order matters really so like which so the the uh, the, the less valuable attacker and the more valuable victim uh, the earlier this move is about to occur within the move list and the more uh, it, it, the more or less valuable attacker and the more or less valuable victim. The, oh, okay, I just that's hard to say. I'm sorry, guys. So I hope the, I hope you got the idea. So uh, moves like where uh, pawn actually captures queen should be and similar like pawn cape captures queen or like knight captures queen or etc. So they should be uh, ordered first before moves like when the more valuable piece captures a less valuable piece. Obviously this schema doesn't uh, doesn't take into account the fact that the, the, the piece that is about to be captured actually might get uh, might be protected. So that's uh, a completely different story and that's the territory of so-called static ex exchange evaluation which is also interesting thing to consider but uh, it's not yet implemented in Wukunja's engine and, and I'm not sure whether it would be implemented ever or not. I just didn't yet take a decision regarding that point. So our the idea is very simple. So every time we're adding the move uh, to the move list, uh, if this move is a capture, this means that we need to sort uh, all the capture, capturing moves uh, using the simple lookup of this MVVLV table. And uh, we plus 10 thousands to make sure that this move would be stored, uh, would be sorted before first killer move, second killer move, and the history moves. So this is regarding captures, and now regarding the history, the, regarding the killer moves. So again, let's go to uh, where the beta cutoff occurs. So let's just go to the Nigamax search here. So let's say uh, the beta cutoff occurs. This means that the move is good enough to actually uh, to make the so-called pruning because we talking about the alphabet of pruning so uh, we're about to make this pruning so in case if this move that the, if the move that is causing the beta cutoff is not a capture but a quiet move well let's say you have uh, mm, your queen under attack and instead of putting your queen away you just move a pawn somewhere so this this is considered to be a killer move because it's you're gonna kill your own queen kill, kill your own position so these moves are about to start in so-called killer table and there are two uh, 
layers within that table. Pe people also use one layer as well. Some 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 use two layers. It's, uh, it's a very uh, insignificant improvement, but still. So the idea is that the killer move from the first move is stored and the killer move of the previous iteration is stored as well. And this helps to improve the ordering of uh, quiet moves, not the capture moves, but of the quiet moves. And these are, or are, are ordered higher compared to so-called history moves. And history moves are simply the moves, those moves that has a potential of increasing the value of alpha, uh, but not yet capable of causing the beta cutoff. So they kind of also not that bad, but they worse than the killer moves. And this called this called, this moves are, are called history moves. And the matter of ordering these moves is, is known as the history heuristics uh, regarding the move ordering. So all this stuff is done uh, within this add move function, uh, which is fired by move generator every time we're adding a move to the move list. So every time this happens, uh, we're not we're not we're not only uh, pushing the move to the move list, but also the move score. And then the most critical part is when it comes to both uh, quiescence and nigamex search. Well, let's start with the nigamex search basically. So we have this loop over all the moves, and here we're sorting the moves. So it's the very basic sorting algorithm involved here. And even not the entire move list has been sorted; it just sorts the next move. And uh, quite often it's enough because the bitter cutoff is produced before the entire move is sorted. And that's uh, another way of optimizing the search. Uh, before this, I was making the move sorting actually before the move of the loop, just for clarity and didactic purposes, but that uh, performs uh, actually much worse compared to this sort of an, sort of an implementation. And I'll, I'll just show you this how, how the sorted move kind of works. So it takes this current index within the move list as the parameter and the pointer to the move list to swap the moves if one is better. And the same stuff is happening within the quiescence search. So right over in here, oh my god, where is that? Quiescence. Uh, okay. Sort move here. And the sort move, yeah, sort move is itself. So if, if we just loop over the next index within the move list, and if it happens that the score of the current is less uh, uh, of the current move is less than the score of the next move. We just swap them, so it, they just swap them, and that's it. And that's how we actually obtain. That, that's how, that's actually how we make uh, the most promising moves to appear in the first rows of the move list. So they are about to be searched first, and they are about to make, uh, and they are about to produce beta cutoffs as soon as possible. So that's the core idea behind it. Well, okay, guys. So I, I think this is that I could have uh, be show uh, I, I could have shown much more things, but I think uh, I would rather uh, I would rather just try to improve my searching logic a little bit more. Uh, I've been showing the proof of concept uh, use interaction a couple of videos uh, a couple uh, uh, in a couple of previous videos uh, recently. Uh, uh, well, actually, just just before recording this video, uh, I fixed a horrible bug that was uh, out uh, when I had an output of uh, not the best. Mo uh, 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 the problem is the problem was that engine was just kind of like giving pieces away. So uh, I, I've added the logic of uh, of outputting the best move from the, from the previous iteration of the iterative dipper to make sure that. Uh, I'm using. Uh, I'm. I'm not gonna pass in some uh, value that already increases alpha, but uh, is not yet searched well enough, so it might lead to a total disaster, like giving up queens and things like that. Well, still, actually, need to debug this a little bit more. So, as soon as I done that, probably a demonstration of mm, playing uh, within the GUI would be shown, because now it might be a little bit of undefined. Uh, uh, unexpected behavior so i don't really want to show you this half work being done well okay guys so this is it from my side uh i just wanted to share it like how how uh, critical move ordering is uh when it comes to the alphabet search uh based chess engine so i hope this is quite pretty pretty impressive stuff stuff and this is the very basics of actually optimizing your search Okay, so this is it from my site, and until next time, and take care.